Okay. Are we live? Okay. So, hi everyone. I'm Chen Ravid from Exascode, the platform for connecting with open source developers. Thank you so much for joining us today. Oktoberfest is a month-long celebration of open source software, and it's great and it's a great way to start contributing to open source projects or contribute more if you're already doing so. At Exascode, we're passionate about open source, and our small contribution to this global event is this webinar, the first of several to come, where we host selected open source developers to talk about their projects. And today, I'm very pleased to uh, host Eldad Fuchs, founder of AppRite, a secure open source backend server for web, mobile, and Flutter developers. Eldad, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you, Chayen. I'm so happy to be here. So glad we had the opportunity to do this uh, uh, event together. And I'm really excited to get started. Awesome. So, Eldad, can you uh, tell us a bit about AppRite uh, and how and why you started it? Yeah, sure. So I started AppRite about one year ago uh, as an open source project on GitHub. Uh, I think the the main reason that I started up with was that I felt that software development has become really, really difficult for me. It was really hard to build new product and a lot of the work that I had to do was really repetitive and uh, complex. So what Apart is actually trying to do is hide a lot of this complexity and repetitiveness in these developers uh, and give developers a much better starting point to their new projects. Uh, and we're going to talk a little bit about that today and also about how you can uh, join in and contribute to our open source celebration and uh, be a part of uh, our great community. Awesome. So just a bit about the community. So I, I know that, uh, that uh, AppRite has a, a growing community of developers and it's, and, it's, uh, and it's starting to gain a lot of momentum and I see a lot of people joining it and a lot of people talking about it. Can you share some information about the community behind it? Yeah, sure. So we definitely grow really, really fast. Uh, the product is still in a beta version. Hopefully it won't stay in beta for too long. Uh, we really hope to release some new version very, very soon. And we've already got over 3,600 GitHub stars. Uh, our Discord community, which is the main place where we communicate, has just reached this week over 1,000 developers, which is really exciting, which is a huge milestone Amazing. for us. And yeah, and we, we celebrated that for the last few days. And hopefully we'll continue that pace because the bigger the community, the stronger the product, the, the better we can make it. Uh, and hopefully with this webinar, uh, a lot of new people will be able to join and contribute to the product itself and also become part of our uh, awesome and growing community. Awesome. So it's very symbolic that during Oktoberfest, you reached like a very nice milestone with the, with your user base. Yeah, so. Yeah. Um, so I'm giving the I'm giving the stage uh, to you, so you can start uh, doing your overview. And uh, viewers, I hope you enjoy this uh, overview of this really really cool uh, project that I think you're gonna really enjoy getting to know. Eldad, the floor is yours. Thank you. Okay, so today we're going to talk about a few things. Uh, first of all, we're going to talk about Oktoberfest, which Hen already mentioned. It's a huge open source celebration. Uh, that uh, is it's great initiative by DigitalOcean and uh, the dev community and also Intel, uh, which try to help open source, new open source contributors to join into the party uh, by uh, giving them the incentives of uh, free t-shirts and stuff like that. If you contribute uh, for, th for a pull request to any kind of uh, repository in GitHub, at Operate, we also uh, try to motivate developers by giving away uh, some free street stickers like this one. Yeah. Really, really cool stickers, high quality. I want one too. <laughs> I, I'm, I promise I'll send you one. Uh, ju just send me your address and you, you'll get right uh, one right in your email, in your mail, not email. It's going to be in your physical mail, uh, like we used to have uh, in the old days. And yeah, and this year, uh, unlike last year, we're also going to give away some free Operate t-shirts to our top contributors. At the end of the month, we're going to have like a committee seeing, uh, going to check who are the top contributors, the one that gave uh, the best contribution and help not in code, but also like managing the community and moderating it and uh, helping it grow. And we're going to give away some cool T-shirts. Uh, we still haven't decided what the final design is going to be, but we're going to share it in our Discord channel once uh, 
once we have it ready. Great. Uh, yeah, so, but it's also important to say that contributing to open source is not just about giving away stickers and stuff like that. It's also like, uh, it has a lot of other benefits and it shouldn't be your only motivation uh, because you can get so many great things from contrib contributing to open source stuff like gaining new experiences, uh, trying new technologies, uh, learning new skill sets, uh, like, you know, stuff like enriching your, your resume, your LinkedIn profile, and also give back to the open source project that you're already uh, using or that you really love and want to, to support and help them. Yeah, so speaking yeah. about uh, contributions, can you give our viewers a few tips if there are new contributors, if, like uh, you have like some, uh, uh, some pointers for people who are just getting started? Yeah, sure. So, so there are some general pointers that I can give that are probably relevant to any open source project out there, but there are so many open source projects and everyone has its own differences and you must uh, like uh, acknowledge those differences and uh, like check every uh, open source project for its documentation and how uh, they're uh, willing to accept new contributions. Uh, but we, today we'll talk a little bit about Operate and how you can contribute to Operate. And uh, I think that's going to help a lot to, to new contributors. Great, let's dive right into it. Yeah, so just a few words about Operate itself. So you can, uh, Operate is a self-hosted uh, server that you can easily install on your desktop environment or your cloud environment. And once you install Operate, you get two main things. Uh, you can, before uh, I'll go into what things you get by installing Operate, it's really, really simple to install Operate. We're using Docker to package all our uh, services and products, uh, so they will be really easy to install on any end platform. Uh, to install Operate, all you have to do is go into our documentation under the installation section. You can see it's that simple to install Operate. All you have to do is uh, copy and paste the command line into your terminal. It's probably going to take you a couple of minutes to download all the different containers. And once that's done, you get two main things. Uh, the first one is that you get this uh, shiny Operate uh, dashboard. Um, I'll, I'll try to show an example. It's probably it's just a really early beta and a development version, so hopefully no major issues uh, when I show it. Okay, so you got this nice and shiny dashboard which you can set up uh, multiple projects that can help you uh, set up uh, your new app. You get all these nice features like control your database, storage, operate offers these multiple APIs and services that gives you the core uh, capabilities that you need uh, to integrate into your new app. Uh, and the second thing you get is you get this uh, full end-to-end -end API which gives you all these services uh, that you can instantly integrate into your app. Operate API is uh, divided into two main sections. The client API, which can be integrated directly into any kind of client app, whether it's a web app, a mobile app, or even a desktop app, like stuff for Mac OS, Windows, and stuff like that. Uh, you can see the full documentation over at the Operate website. You can see the account API, for example, which allows you to integrate all your user management authentication log logic into your app. And for example, you can create a user account, you can create a user session, you can recover the user passwords, uh, get a list of the user session and many uh, other things like that. Uh, you can go through all the different operate services uh, on the website. Uh, you can ask questions in our Discord community, which is really welcoming and uh, helping out with uh, any question that you can have. There's no stupid questions on, on our community. Everything, everyone is welcome and any question is a smart question. So feel free to join. You can join the Discord community by clicking the Discord link on our homepage. There's also a link on our GitHub repository if you're feeling more comfortable there. Uh, you can join it just by clicking it and getting into the Discord server. You can easily create a new account or if you're already on Discord, it will just join you into the channel. Okay, so 
you get all these cool APIs. As I said that the main API is divided into two main sections. The first one is the client API. The second one is a server API, which is more like an administration API, which you get more capabilities. There's no uh, any permission restriction. You can get all your server users and do all those kind of things that you can also do from the operate console. And as of today, the operate console basically lets you do almost anything that you can do through the API. On the next operate version, version 0.7, we're going to give even more capabilities and also uh, make operate a lot better. Maybe I'll talk a little bit about the next version uh, a little bit later. Okay, so this is basically what Operate is, and you can dig into the website and learn more. Uh, I don't want to talk too much about it because we're also we need to have some time to talk about how to start contributing code to Operate. And okay, so what is the best way to to start contributing to Operate? First of all, you need to understand the scope of things. Operate has many repositories on GitHub in many different technologies. You can check out our GitHub organization, github.com slash operate. And you can see that we have many repositories in many languages. One of the best thing about operate is that you really can contribute. It doesn't matter like what tech stack uh, you're coming from, what is your, your skill set. We have so many technologies and integration for operate with different languages and framework that you can just slide in and uh, contribute in any kind of area of operate. So we have like uh, people that can contribute with uh, a lot of demos, a lot of tutorials. If you're coming from Angular, we have demos and tutorials for Angular. If you're coming from React, we have some for that as well. If you're coming from the Flutter world, we have a lot of Flutter things that you can contribute to, including our SDK or Flutter Playgrounds or creating better knowledge base around Flutter or even just helping around in our community. And um, Eldad, can I uh, stop you for a second for a, for a quick question from uh, from our viewers? Um, yeah, sure. They're asking if, if there are specific issues, uh, if there are specific issues or topics that you prefer people to contribute to. If there are any need, specific needs right now that that you're uh, that you're more uh, aiming for. Yeah, sure. So we have a lot of open issues uh, that you can just go through and check what you can contribute in. Uh, an easy way to check the different issues is just to go to your issues tab on GitHub and like play around with the query here and for example, set an organization to operate. I'll just delete the author because it doesn't matter who authored the issue. And you can see that we have over 150, actually exactly 150 open issues that anyone can just see if he has the skill set, if he has the motivation to help in any specific issue and just say, uh, comment on the issue, say, hey, I can help with that. Uh, sometimes we can give you some a uh, few pointers how to solve issue, how we think it should be solved. Um, we can also guide you on the Discord channels or in any kind of platform that you prefer. And you, we can really walk with you and help you solve the issue. So the open issue is great to uh, start contributing, and we have on the main operate report which i'm going to go to and have some uh, high issues that are really good for games like operate content is a really good uh, way for people to start contributing to operate because it's not like stuff that you have to develop developing the core operate api it's like it helps you like get started using Operate and then uh, create some demos and content about Operate. It really helps you get more familiar with the product itself, see if you like it, and then you have a lot more knowledge about contributing to uh, like more difficult uh, features and even suggest your own features, which is always welcome and uh, anyone can just uh, have a feature request on the issues and not just uh, like the issues are not just dedicated to bug reports or anything like that. We also really like to have discussion on our issues and see what new features can come up and uh, have a feedback from the community, which is also very, very helpful talking about contribution. So being part of these discussions is really, really helpful for our community and for us being operator. Okay, great, thanks for answering. Sure, so, uh, uh, so 
different repositories that we have, and we have so many repositories and different areas where which you can contribute in. And we have also talked about the different issues that you can just pick up or even create your own new issue if you see anything that can be improved, if you have any kind of idea. You don't even have to develop the idea. You can just like suggest it and we can have a discussion, a community discussion about that idea. And maybe someone else will pick it up. Someone from the core operating will uh, start developing it. But if you have this discussion, it's also a really meaningful contribution uh, to make to the product. Okay, so besides issues and uh, the deeper channel, the best way probably to get started by contributing to our project, so basically any source project out there is checking out the contribution guide. And in the last few weeks, we've made some work on improving it, and we really would love to get your feedback on that as well. Uh, but on our contribution guide, we have some very basic uh, uh, sections about how it's best to get started with contributing to operate. For example, if you're really just uh, a newbie, just starting with open source, so you can see uh, what is the best way to pull request and um, how to set up operate from source and set up your own development environment. All this information is just in the contribution guide. Uh, it's really important to mention that. Installing operate as a user and installing operate as a maintainer is not the same. Uh, so you should, if you're going to contribute code to operate, you should probably set it up from source. Uh, the setup is really, really simple. You just have to clone our repository and set up your Docker Compose uh, with all the operate containers. And this, uh, the environment should just uh, be up and running. You can access your console. You can change things inside our code. Uh, the main operate code is written in both JavaScript and PHP. But again, if you're coming from Python, if you're coming from Go, from Node.js, there's a lot of ways to contribute uh, in those areas as well, using any of our SDKs, any of our playgrounds, or any of our uh, demos and uh, tutorials. So after you set up your environment, you can just look and view how, how the operate architecture is constructed. From starting basic things like the file structure of Operate, we've just added uh, this documentation recently, and it's really, really helpful to get started knowing which file, uh, what each file is doing, and where each file should be uh, placed. Uh, this is really self explanatory, so I'm not going to go over the li this list, obviously. And another great thing in the Operate contribution file is that you can see the entire Operate architecture. And the Operate API basically can integrate with any end platform, whether it's your backend server, your web, your web app, your Flutter app, any iOS or Android app. We still don't have uh, SDKs for iOS and Android, but we hopefully will support those as well pretty soon. Uh, if anyone wants to contribute uh, in that area, that can be great. We already have some work in progress there, but uh, we can definitely use some extra hands uh, uh, really fine-tuning those uh, SDKs and releasing them as soon as possible. And you can just go through this file. Uh, I can go over it shortly. Uh, every offer re request is entering our load balancer. You're using traffic, traffic uh, for load balancing, which is really uh, good for load balancing Docker containers. Uh, the load balancer also take control of all the SSL uh, certificate issues and auto generating those uh, certificates uh, really, really easily. So developers using Operate don't have to worry about that. In order to work with Operate self uh, auto generated SSL certificate, you have to run on a production server because you can't generate SSL certificates for local hosts. So if you're running Operate on your desktop, that's not going to work. You're just going to use the default self-signed certificate, which is going to give you a scary browser warnings, which are OK when you're running on your own desktop, but not in production. So in production, you'll have a, a valid uh, automated issue, automatically issued the uh, SSL certificate. Um, going deeper, so there is the main operate API container, which includes all the uh, API, uh, all the API code written mainly in PHP. And there you'll find all the different operate services. Uh, 
the API layer is really, really thin. It doesn't do a lot. It just try to. It's only communicating with the database through our Redis a, a container, which we are using it for both caching and pub subbing. So, upper API is basically not doing that, that much. It's only trying to communicate with the database and uh, respond really, really fast to all user requests. Actually, in version 0.7, we've done some architectural changes which made the operate API respond like seven times faster, which is a huge improvement. And hopefully, uh, we'll release uh, the new version soon and everyone could benefit from that. Um, okay, so besides the communicating with the database, the operate API layer also um, communicate with our pub sub service, which is Redis, uh, to pass all the heavy lifting, like any uh, hard CPU consuming tasks that the server has to do are basically not happening on the API layer. It happens in the background workers that uh, constantly run and pick new messages from our pub sub services. Like even if we need to delete a collection with 10,000 documents, so we won't do that on the fly. We'll send a message to the Redis uh, pub sub mechanism uh, the background worker, in that case, the database background worker, will pick that task when uh, he'll finish his previous task, and he will do that in the background, and the user won't uh, need to wait for any response, so the API will respond really, really fast, and all the heavy lifting will happen in the background. Using this architecture also help us uh, have a really good control of the different uh, scale that we want to run our server and control our costs. So if you want your background tasks to run faster, it's really easy to scale them up by just multiplying the different worker containers that operate uh, is running. So that's really, really great. By using that architecture, it's also basically the microservices architecture. It's also really easy to debug any bottlenecks in your infrastructure. You can just uh, check the stats of the different container, see which one is working uh, harder than others or harder than it should be. And you can just scale it up and add more containers, uh, go to uh, add more CPU into your hardware or add an, uh, more servers into your hardware or whatever you want. Um, but by default, they don't do much if you don't really put a lot of load on them. So they should run uh, really, really well. Yeah, so moving forward, the uh, contribution guys also has some manifest about how we run our repositories in terms of uh, our monolithic part, our microservice part, our uh, technology stack with some other explanations about uh, what the different tools that we're using are uh, used for, uh, what part are they taking in the architecture. So it's a really interesting read, even if you're not going to contribute to operate, it's really interesting to know how uh, such a complicated and complex product is operating behind the scene. Uh, Eldad, if you will, a question from our, from our viewers, just not to interrupt your flow. Um, people are asking if there are more ways to contribute to uh, AppRight other than uh, submitting pull requests. Yeah, sure. So. I was just going through the contribution guide, and in uh, the last oh, section, we lost you for a second. Guide. Yeah, can you hear me now? Yes, I think. Yeah. Yeah, sure. So, uh, in the last part of our contribution uh, section, you can find other ways to contribute to operate. You know, getting code contribution is really, really great. But it's not the only way or the most important even uh, to contribute to any open source product. Uh, as our community grow, we really need help moderating, uh, helping people that need support. So, you know, uh, when we have so many users, there are, so, there are questions in the support channels are uh, popping up uh, more and more often. And it's really helpful that uh, core contributors can focus on maintaining the product, creating new features, uh, reviewing pull requests, uh, rather than answering uh, people's questions, uh, which is awesome and great. We love to do that. But if people can help around and help us uh, focus on different things, that can be really, really helpful and uh, also uh, help us uh, become a better community and not only a better product, but also things like 
talking about upright, uh, writing blog posts, creating demos and use different use cases of upright is also really helpful because as bigger the community gets, the more people know about upright, help us really build a better product. And we had some people from the community talking in meetups and uh, showing off upright, which is really, really great. And we also offer our, our help in uh, like uh, creating slides and um, going through them and reviewing content that people create about our really help them fine tune it and see that uh, they can uh, show their content in the best way. And I've talked before about uh, sending us feedback and uh, uh, having feature requests, which is really, really helpful. A lot of times we are labeling issues in our uh, GitHub repository as discussions. So we really like to get developer feedback about new features that are going to come up, about the next versions. And also our roadmap is completely transparent. You can just go into our GitHub repository uh, on our project sub. You can see everything that is planned for the next version. You can suggest new features. You can see the progress of current versions. Uh, for example, the uh, uh, next version, which is almost ready to shift. Uh, you can just follow the different issues, offer help, uh, offer, offer feedback, and even suggest new features, which is also always great. Um, OK. so. Um if if I'm a contributor then and I'm considering making a, make submitting a pull request, what what you what you would consider as a good versus a bad pull request? Like what do you like getting? Yeah, so we've just added uh, new templates to help developers uh, submit good pull requests. So I guess a good pull request will be one where the contributors have read our contribution guide have really give good uh, documentation and explanation about the changes that he made and communicate really, really well with us, even if something is uh, not right or we need some changes or fixes, then it's really important to communicate with us and have a, a fast discussions about everything because if we like you're responding in a week later, that's kind of hard to get back into the scope of the pull request and the issues. So good communication is really, really good. And on the other end, if you're talking about bad pull requests, so, Obviously, we've seen a lot of this Oktoberfest spam, which is... Uh, yeah, everybody has. Yeah, the situation right now is much better. I think the the changes into the into the Oktoberfest rules were really, really on, on the spot and really yeah, helped. The, the first uh, few days were crazy. Yeah, it was crazy, but uh, things seem much, much better now. So no spam, please. It's really, it takes us so much time to go through each pull request, even if it's just, you know, you added a white space. We still, yeah. we want to give feedback. We don't want to be rude to anyone from the community, uh, but please avoid any spam. Uh, I think another thing that might be bad is that if you anything has changed and you don't have any time to finish the pull request or things got like really really complex that you don't feel like you can uh, you can make it and uh, really complete the task so just tell us it's okay we really we won't hold it back against you but it will give other people the opportunity to maybe tackle this issue and help us in a different way because Otherwise, if we don't know where the issue stand, it might be just waiting for a lot of time and we might be someone else that would like to help with that. So communicating, communication is really, really important uh, and really helpful and saves us tons of times and makes uh, the pull requests much better and the product much better, which is the main goal of uh, everything that we do uh, day to day. Awesome. Thanks for clearing, clearing that up. Yeah, so I think that we've covered most important things that about how to contribute to upright what are the most important things to keep in mind when you try to op contribute into offers i think that you should also really notice the different labeling on the github issues look out for uh, issues that are really good beginners and we have a lot of them in operate because we really want to encourage people to contribute to open source and we really want to be this repository this is super welcoming for new contributors uh, so we're not just looking for code ninjas which are also always welcome uh, but also beginners that are making their first pull request there's a lot of issues that are labeled as Oktoberfest or good first issues, which don't require from you any specific knowledge about the operate architecture 
sure about the upper tech stack, uh, you can just jump in and someone from our community, if you need it, can help you. Uh, we'll go with you hand by hand uh, through all the phase uh, from taking the issue to submitting your for pool request to merging it. And uh, hopefully we'll send you some swags. Uh, any uh, merge pull request is entitled with operate swags. And we also uh, give people the opportunity to join the operate organization on GitHub and gain the operate badge on their profile. And That's yeah. Awesome. Yeah, and we really, really want new contributors to join our our amazing community and uh, make it larger, make it stronger, and make operate a better for developers. Okay, that's that's great. Can you share a bit about like the major uh, things on your roadmap, like uh, some interesting things we're going to see in the near future? Yeah, sure. So for the next version, uh, most of the people in the community already know that Cloud Functions is going to be the main feature. Uh, for me personally, also the performance uh, improvements that we've made are huge and uh, they are so significant that uh, I'm sure everyone are going to notice how the Opera server has become much faster. And honestly, I'm, I'm not the most objective person, but it wasn't slow for it to begin with. And uh, other stuff that are coming up are like GraphQL support for the API, a real-time server. We're going to have a built-in WebSocket server uh, as an independent container in Operate, which is going to give developers the possibility to uh, give their application real-time capabilities. And there are so many things that are just waiting to happen, uh, both on our game issues, both on our public roadmap, and some issues that we're just ready for the right timing to to share with the community and uh, but again uh, we'd love people to join us join our discord community and uh, become part of operate as both as a code contributor or as any other kind of contribution uh, also uh, more than welcome that's amazing thanks for sharing that um any other things you'd like to uh share with the viewers you no, know, I'd love to answer any questions if uh, anyone has any. And I think that uh, let's we, see if we, we have anything. We, have if we don't have any questions. I saw that somebody um, uh, wrote something about GraphQL, so I think you, I think you pretty much answered that. Yeah, uh, GraphQL is a major thing thing on our roadmap. We really want to add GraphQL support. We're also we're really looking at operators as this agnostic server that don't really care about it, the end platform or the developer usage. So beside GraphQL, we have some other cool ideas that hopefully we could share soon about different protocols that people will be able to interact with the operator server. So that's really exciting, but we still uh, haven't uh, got to the point where we can share more details. Uh, but yeah. GraphQL is great. <laughs> yeah, we're all waiting for that. Um, uh, so I didn't know about the WebSockets. WebSockets is going to be it's going to be major improvement. So uh, anyone else uh, has some uh, some questions? Um, I don't see anything right now. I think we. Yeah, I see. I think I see something about the ARM AMD support. So we've been doing a lot of work in the last. Uh, I think the last two weeks in the community. Uh, both making our Docker containers much smaller using the Alpine-based image, images. And also we're, we've started building a lot of our containers uh, to support the ARM architecture. Uh, I know there are a couple of guys in the community that want to see if Operate can work on their Raspberry Pi devices. <laughs> Let's good, good luck with that. Yeah, that's something that I really want to, to achieve. And hopefully, uh, we're pretty close. I think we're pretty close. Uh, so finger crossed. Uh, we've done a lot of work for that. And we're almost there. It feels like it's just uh, a few steps that we have really? to make. That's amazing. Yeah. OK, so um, I think uh, I think this was a really interesting overview uh, of, of, of the product. And I think it's a, it's an amazing community. And I don't think we, you see a lot of communities like the one that that's gathered around AppRite in terms of, I think, the transparency and 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 the good spirit of everyone. You know, sometimes open source projects are difficult to maintain because so many people, so many opinions. And I really like seeing that this is a, being managed yeah. so well. 
yeah, I think that's a major value that we're trying to make our community extremely welcoming and open because at the end of the day, it's not just about open source or using cool development product. It's also about having fun uh, doing doing that, both developing and using the, those kind of products. And I think our community is definitely, it's an amazing community and hopefully we'll keep growing and we'll keep this spirit uh, alive of uh, being such a welcoming community uh, for both beginners and uh, senior developers. Awesome, that's super great. And I see great things ahead for, for you and, uh, and AppRight and, uh, and for the community as well. So uh, thank you a lot for joining us for this first uh, webinar for the Oktoberfest uh, Developer Spotlight from Xscode. And uh, thanks so much uh, to our viewers who, uh, who spent this time with us. I hope you learned something and uh, I hope uh, this would give you uh, some some interest in enjoying the, the, the AppRite community and, and, and contributing to this really, really great project. And uh, thanks for joining us and we'll see you soon in the, in the next event. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone.